About half a year ago, three quarters of a year ago, I met uh, Paola Tasca. And he, he worked for the German, uh, the German Central Bank uh, at that moment. And he told me, at that time, we didn't have Ron giving a nice presentation about the Dutch Central Bank. So I was amazed about somebody from the, from the Central Bank who was just so excited about blockchain, or so excited about Bitcoin. And he spent two and a half years of his life researching what happened in that Bitcoin economy. So, uh, and I asked him to come over. He's now, he changed jobs. He's now um, uh, chairman of the Blockchain Expertise Center in London. But he, he's been really in with his feet in the mud analyzing what's going on in the Bitcoin economy. And that, that's what I want to share with you. So uh, let's give a hand to Paula. Paula. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the second time in uh, the so second time. Let me let me correct you because you changed my gender. So yeah. my name is Paolo. Paolo. Yeah. Just for gender equality. And I'm male. I'm not female. <laughs> we can discuss what <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the, uh, the slide uh, thing of the earth here. <laughs> I'm, such a pro, I'm such a beginner in this. We in are this open. Place. Yeah. Okay. How, but how different is the, is, are the central banks that you, as an Italian, you know, you know, get from Ger the German bank two years of your life to study the whole Bitcoin economy? How does that work? Well, <laughs> to be honest, I started even before to join the, the, the Deutsche Bundesbank when I was uh, at ETH in Zurich. I was a scientist there. And then uh, for a brief period, I, was, I moved to London, to the London School of Economics. And already at that time, I started to be um, intrigued about this, uh, this new uh, topic because some colleagues of mine at that time uh, came to me uh, with this uh, new Bitcoin, this uh, fancy token where the volatility was at that time very high. And uh, as a, a former trader, I was uh, very <laughs> interested to look into this type of uh, new ideas. And then at the central bank, uh, I developed more uh, a scientific background on this topic. and I, Develop. Uh, yeah. I'm still my is my current resort. Yeah, and you're still very interested. But why were the Germans so interested to sponsor you for a number of years to do your research? What is why was the why the interest? So you know, um, uh, we are living in a in an interesting period. I think uh, in terms of uh, economic uh, macroeconomic perspective. So. Um, we have seen that uh, um, uh, there is uh, a, um, a, an evolving, uh, uh, fast evolving dynamics uh, in the banking and payment space, where you have uh, technology companies invading the, the banking and payment systems. Yeah. And at the same time, so we have seen that the monetary policy tools uh, at the hand, uh, in the hand of the central banks are a little bit uh, uh, sometimes weak. So there is a, a somehow a pressure from outside, uh, which is basically driven by the tech companies. And, uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, there is a, 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 an awareness that uh, basically the, uh, the, 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 the ordinary monetary uh, tools are not uh, enough, enough. To, to boost the economy in okay. a special period where the, their interest rates are already low. And so that's why they want to go to other spaces. Let's, le let's take a look at your... Um uh, your presentation. I'm going to fast forward to them. I want to go to a particular slide. You uh, said that it was. Uh, I'm first going to ask you the questions about your um, um, about about the Bitcoin. You first uh, you analyzed that China is very active, right? Yeah. You uh, you talked about uh, you had a slide about the mining pool that China is basically taking over the world, uh, and that happened in the last couple of years. But not only they have a lot of mining, they also do a lot of transactions, right? Yes, that's true. So um, it happened that I was in China two weeks ago, and they are sponsoring uh, at the governmental level, uh, uh, national level and uh, local level, a lot of the big data analytics, uh, blockchain technologies. And they are investing uh, uh, hundreds of millions of uh, dollars uh, uh, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this area. So uh, certainly for, for economic reasons, because of the cost of our energy is uh, lower than in Europe, and the US, uh, the miners are taking over. Uh, this is something, as we can see from the slide, this is something that already emerged since uh, the beginning of 2014. Yeah. And you can see also then uh, that the miners then at the end they need to convert back to RMB, uh, Chinese Yuan, uh, their uh, 
their reward, and therefore the volume in the exchange uh, are, I think, uh, uh, something like three times larger than the volume uh, exchange uh, uh, with respect to the US dollar. So. Yeah, yeah. This is a, a I mean, uh, uh, yeah, is, 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 is a matter of fact. I mean, uh, uh, it's not a, neither a good or a bad, uh, a bad information. It's a, it's a matter of fact, and therefore, uh, uh, it's not a case when you talk about uh, criticalities in the Bitcoin space, like scaling Bitcoin. This type of uh, conference are taking place in Asia, are not a <laughs> not in Europe and not in America. No, so no. we're but, but we're doing our best. We have a nice small, sure. you know, we have a nice little conference uh, here. So let's talk about your. You basically took uh, a bunch of the transactions from Bitcoin and started the analysis. Uh, how did you do that? Um, you, of course, can download them from the blockchain. And how do you work with that? Yeah, so basically, um, we have heard also this morning that uh, the, the Bitcoin economy is uh, the Bitcoin transactions are not un completely anonymous, up pseudonymous. So this means that you can somehow uh, trace uh, the flow of transactions. And uh, there are some techniques uh, which are uh, basically have been used by the scientists during the last two years uh, to, to try to identify who are basically the, the, the standard the recipients. Uh, we use one of these techniques, uh, which is called uh, input-output method. So we collect together the, the, the inputs uh, in one single transaction, and uh, we consider them belonging to the same uh, cluster. And uh, if uh, in the future uh, some of, of the inputs are overlapping with other inputs in other, with other transitions, we collab again together in a, in a new cluster, and so on and so forth during the last six years. And we obtain this network that you see here, basically, of the clusters uh, uh, that is basically at the end a bunch of, uh, of addresses. And, uh, and they basically, these clusters interact among each other. We do a step forward, so we try to identify the clusters. Uh, by starting from uh, basically a, a small uh, uh, group uh, or already identified uh, economic agents. We knew exactly who they are, who they were at that time, like Kraken or uh, 21st Inch or any other company in the Bitcoin space. And then we trace their transactions uh, and we link them uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the Bitcoin, uh, to the Bitcoin network. And uh, if you, I think is the, in the next slides, you can see the other one. You can see exactly that uh, we were, no, no, the other, the other one, exactly here. Right. So basically, this is, the final, this is the final one. Basically, what we did here is uh, uh, to, uh, to color the network according to the business category of the different clusters. We don't know for the most of them uh, who they are, but we know at least uh, from which business category they belong to. Mm -hmm. And what are the main categories? I cannot see them here. Well, he, this, is, this is a snapshot of the last six years of transactions in the Bitcoin network. So you see a big uh, um, stake from uh, uh, gambling and uh, black markets and exchange. But uh, if, you, if you move on, uh, for example, here, this is the evolution of the income inflow from the different clusters in the different categories. And you see that at the beginning, the, the green one is the, are the miners. The beginning means since January 2009, there were only minor few, few hundreds of Bitcoin users. And then this was the first phase uh, the, of early adopters. And the second phase is where you see this uh, black and blue. Black means deep, deep web, black markets, so the use of Bitcoin in that kind of uh, illegal markets, and the blue are gambling activities. So this is the second phase of the Bitcoin economy, where you had uh, uh, the use of these uh, tokens for these um, uh, uh, illegal activities or just for gambling. And the last part where you are living now is the red one, where you have uh, an intense uh, uh, volume by, by exchange. So this means that the merchants that are accepting uh, the Bitcoin as a mean of payments, they go back to the exchange to, to convert this uh, token back to their currency. So this means that we are going, we are living now in a more mature Bitcoin economy. We are not, uh, the, the black market, the legal activity, despite what uh, uh, some authority may think of, uh, are not uh, very important in the Bitcoin economy. So the majority of the transactions are driven by illicit market, legal markets. Uh -huh. And you say it is uh, merchants accepting money. Is it also transferring money over the world? Uh, is that also is it a separate category, or is that in the red one? Uh? It's, it's in the red one. So all 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 included. Yes. Yeah. So this is the red one. Is basically the legal markets, and the, together with the, the with the green one. So you see the percentage of the of the black market of the uh, of the legal market now is uh, very very limited. So yeah. 
And did the black market and the blue and the gambling, did they become smaller or is it more that other, uh, other uses became much bigger so that they are much higher volume now? No, they, the volume they, the same? They, they, are becoming, they are becoming smaller. They are becoming smaller because uh, you can see here basically this is uh, the same but converted in the, in the rank. So it's the rank of the centrality uh, measure in the network. Uh, and you see that basically uh, relatively, so this is the sum of their relative importance. So so all together, rank together, and you see basically that uh, the the rank of the illegal markets uh, uh, is uh, smaller and smaller, almost negligible now. But also uh, not not because the other ones may become bigger, but no, they no, really relative. also be yes. and that's because governments started to interfere with it, or what's the reason that they became smaller? Well, I don't know, but uh, simply saying, I think that the cash is still always the <laughs> most used. Uh, way of uh, for for illicit traffic i mean i don't think that uh, i don't believe in these uh, um, uh, um, ideas of uh, uh, um, criminals uh, using bitcoin for yeah. for, for activities too complicated okay, so for this is uh, a very interesting slide now you're moving now you move now from germany to london and you're using the blick, the, the, the the blockchain expertise the, center yes. what are you going to do there so b this is uh, um, the center for blockchain technologies at the university college london is uh, an interdepartmental department mental center where we have uh, basically seven departments. We have uh, the major stakeholders is uh, the computer science department, but we have also economics department, law department, uh, technology and finance. Uh, and we want to study the, the blockchain technologies deeply into the different three aspects, the technology and science, economics uh, and finance and legal and uh, regulations and across sectors. So um, because we think that this type of technology or technologies, as we call, um, may impact our society at large, not only the financial service market, which is the first one, because the, most of the activities are already digitized, but uh, many others. We have been uh, listening about uh, letter of credit, uh, so logistics and transportation, healthcare, uh, industry, robotics, Internet of Things. Uh, you will have a lot of fun in the next years, I think. Okay, thank you. That's a very great conclusion and you have a fantastic thing coming up. So next year we'll see you again you. to see the most exciting um, you know, examples of blockchain uh, out of London. Thank you very much, Paolo. Thank you. <laughs> Paolo. <laughs> okay.